It's the most versatile substance in the universe. But honestly, who wouldn't want to play a little catch in the backyard with a vibranium frisbee? In today's video, we are going to explore this mystical and almost legendary material that brought the nation of Wakanda to life. From weapons and technology, to medicine and healing, there is so much more to vibranium than meets the eye. With its ancient history on Earth and beyond, there are bound to be several interesting facts and unknown secrets about Black Panther's favorite Sunday getup. So without further ado, let's dive right in. Man, when Howard Stark told Steve Rogers that vibranium was extremely rare, he was not kidding. We all know the story of its existence on Earth, the crash landing of a meteorite in the African nation of Wakanda one million years ago. Now, while it is still unknown exactly where that meteorite originated from, we do have confirmation that this story was not unique to Earth. Captain Marvel made the discovery of vibranium on the planet Torfa when the Spartax Empire attempted to poison the planet using its vibranium deposits. Torfa has made a brief appearance in the MCU in the film Captain Marvel, where she and the other Kree Star Force members attempted a rescue against the Skrulls. This led to Carol's capture by her future ally, Talos. Vibranium has existed on other planets for sure, but as far as can be told, those deposits have been completely used up. This leaves Torfa and Earth with the only known sources of vibranium in the Milky Way galaxy. While it is quite well known that vibranium can do incredible things, it is definitely not all fun in games. Wakandans have been able to use vibranium to cure injury and illness, as well as create incredible inventions that have furthered their society centuries beyond the world around them. However, in the beginning, the discovery of vibranium came with a lot of unfortunate side effects. One of the worst of these was what became known as vibranium sickness. Ancient unsafe mining techniques caused unprocessed vibranium ore to seep into the ground, resulting in its mixture with the Wakandans' food and water supply. After ingesting enough of it, the unfortunate soul in question would become deathly ill and perish unless the disease could be identified and treated early enough. Luckily, updated mining techniques have all but eradicated the sickness, diminishing it to nothing but an ancient miner's disease. But that's not even the worst result from Vibranium's introduction into Wakanda. What could be worse than Vibranium sickness? Well, how about being mutated by Vibranium into a demon spirit? No, really, it's true. When the Vibranium meteorite first crashed, the mightiest warrior in the tribe, Bashenga, deemed that the material would be used to forge weapons. However, radiation mutated some of the tribesmen into large monsters called demon spirits. In fact, it was this transformation that led to the first Black Panther. Bashenga pleaded with the Panther God to give him the strength to defeat these demons. In return, he was granted superhuman strength and agility. He defeated the demon spirits and used his new gifts and the discovery of vibranium to unite the tribes into the nation of Wakanda. Few may know that Wakanda is not the only source of vibranium on Earth. Hidden deep within the Antarctic tundra is a mass of land covered in jungle. This is known as the Savage Land. Within the Savage Land is a different form of vibranium that has come to be known as anti-metal. This anti-metal has the opposite effects of Wakandan vibranium. It emanates vibrations and has the unique capability of attacking other metals at the subatomic level, weakening them to the point of melting. It is also revealed to be extremely dangerous as it can decompose the iron in a person's blood. The fashioning of Antarctic vibranium into weapons has proven to be very difficult. After the Doom War, Shuri led a mission to procure some Antarctic vibranium in hopes to replace the large amount of Wakandan vibranium that was left inert. When even your wife tells you that you're the only man on a team of gods, you had better have some tricks up your sleeve. It is his position on the Avengers that makes it incredibly necessary for Hawkeye to be one of the most clever and resourceful Marvel characters. You name a trick arrow and Clint Barton probably has it in his arsenal. Smoke bombs, explosives, grapple arrows, and yes, even vibranium tipped. His Wakandan variety of vibranium arrows certainly pack a powerful punch, but it is his anti-metal arrows that strike me as the most impressive. Using the power of anti-metal to break down all other metals on a molecular level makes even Hawkeye a match for someone like an adamantium-covered Ultron. How does one fight a being made of living sound? What even is that? Ulysses Claw sure knows. Having once jumped into his sonic converter device, he was transformed into such a creature. Faced with this unusual challenge, Mr. Fantastic, being one of the greatest minds in the Marvel Universe, was forced to come up with a solution. And he came up with probably the coolest solution I can think of. 
Knowing of Vibranium's ability to absorb sonic energy, he asked Wakanda for a set of Vibranium knuckle dusters and proceeded to teach Claw that even beings made of invisible vibration waves can feel pain. Is there really anything Vibranium can't do? If tempered properly, Vibranium has the power to amplify mystical energies around it, making all those who master the mystic arts that much more powerful. How does it do this? Well, simple. Just put quantum in front of everything. Vibranium is able to tap into energy on the quantum level, which is nearly infinite. Using Vibranium in this way, however, makes the substance highly unstable. It is extremely difficult and dangerous to even attempt. A brave and crazy soul once attempted and even succeeded in accessing the mystical properties of Vibranium, and he used it to bring Wakanda to its knees. I believe you know him as Victor Von Doom. One of Marvel's all-time evil masterminds is of course responsible for ruining Vibranium for everyone. At the start of the Doom War, Doctor Doom and a handful of Wakandan radicals known as the Desturi gained access to Wakanda's vast supply of Vibranium. The most dangerous substance in the hands of Earth's most dangerous mind is surely not a good combination. Doom used the Vibranium to create Doombots, spy on Wakanda, and even overthrow the Wakandan royal family. In a last-ditch effort to stop him, T'Challa, through relatively unknown means, rendered all Wakandan Vibranium inert, making it no more special than the dented bumper on the back of my Toyota. In short, Doctor Doom is why we can't have nice things. After the great King T'Challa decided to rid the world of functioning Wakandan Vibranium in order to stop the villainous Doctor Doom, it was only a matter of time before something would come to replace it. Horizon Lab scientist Sajani Jaffrey created such a replacement, and let's just say it did not go exactly as planned. The variant, known as Reverbium, performed the exact opposite functions of Vibranium and similar functions to Antimetal. Instead of absorbing vibrations and energy, it reverberated them. This unique quality made it highly sought after for the creation of weapons. Imagine not only a shield that absorbs all blows, but one that sends the strengths of those blows back at the attacker tenfold. Though it is much easier to destroy than Vibranium, it was still decided that the destructive potential of Reverbium was too great and the majority of the supply was destroyed. This may be the coolest thing you hear all day. The first leader of Wakanda, Bashanga, fashioned a sword out of the Vibranium that crash landed on the Great Mound, and he gave it probably the greatest name any sword has ever had, Skybreaker. The ancient weapon of pure Vibranium was used by Bashenga to defend his people, and has been passed from monarch to monarch for generations. During the recent X of Swords event, Aurora Monroe, also known as the Mutant Storm, stole the Skybreaker from Wakanda and brought it to Otherworld to fight Death, one of the Horsemen of Apocalypse. While this caused a rift with Wakanda, Storm was able to reflect Death's stare back at him and plunged Skybreaker straight through him. So I mean, worth it? The Red Guardian was the Soviet Union's attempt to have its own symbol in the same way that Captain America represented the United States. And like Captain America, the Red Guardian is a mantle that gets passed from person to person. The seventh person to hold this mantle went by the name of Anton. Anton, being lucky number seven, saw an upgrade in the shield used by past Red Guardians. His shield would now, probably an attempt to just further copy and paste Captain America, be cast in Wakandan Vibranium. This shield was then passed on to the next Red Guardian, Vanguard, who further updated it with an onboard computer. While Alexei Shostakov, the first Red Guardian, did not have a Vibranium shield, don't be surprised if David Harbour one day carries around some of that Wakandan magic on the big screen. Captain America's shield is probably the most famous invention to come from Wakandan Vibranium. However, few know that Cap's iconic shield is not made of pure Vibranium. And one step further, the material that makes up the shield was discovered by accident. During World War II, a scientist by the name of Myron McLean was tasked with developing new strong metals for the US government. While attempting to bond Vibranium with another metal to create an alloy, Dr. McLean fell asleep during his experiment and awoke finding his experiments had produced the strongest known metal on Earth. Some sources vary on what exactly the other ingredient to the alloy is, but it makes Captain America's shield one of the most unbreakable objects in the world. How lucky can one guy get? The same Myron McLean, after discovering the material in Cap's shield, would go on to accidentally discover the formula for the strongest naturally occurring metal in the Marvel Universe. The alloy that makes up Captain America's shield would come to be known as Proto-Adamantium, and was actually stronger than the true form. But the real deal was a highly sought after resource. 
Given that McLean was asleep during Proto-Adamantium's creation, his attempts to replicate the formula went unsuccessful, but led to the aforementioned discovery of the Adamantium formula. Myron McLean became a very rich man, selling his formula to the US government. As crazy as it sounds, the multi-talented substance of vibranium was discovered to exist in forms possessing sentience. Discovered by the Dora Milaje in a Wakandan cave known as the Echo Chamber, this form of living vibranium is able to defend itself, bond with human hosts, and control the natural world immediately surrounding it. The quote, smart metal, would often mimic the characteristics and style of its attacker, making it an excellent place for the Dora Milaje to train. Naturally, a living and self-aware metal as strong as vibranium can certainly be volatile. The Dora Milaje learned to control the living vibranium and would even go on to use it for all kinds of purposes, from controlling their weapons to opening quasi-dimensional portals to other realms, because it can literally do anything. The first benefit of being the new Captain America is that you get all the best gear. Sam Wilson's flight suit for a long time has had vibranium elements. His wings are lined with it and his harness is strapped with top-of-the-line Wakandan vibranium. Given its lightweight nature and ability to maintain speed and velocity even after being struck, it is the perfect material to make a pair of wings out of. In the MCU, now that we have seen that Falcon's new Captain America uniform comes straight from Wakanda via special request, it is almost a guarantee that it was made and fused with Wakandan technology. The vibranium in his wings will continue to not only help him fly, but be used as an all but impenetrable shield, highlighting his role as the defender of the nation.